In the world of sport fishing, it seems that even the best fisheries are in a constant state of change. The waters of Western Lake Ontario are no exception. But if you plan a visit to the Niagara region of Lake Ontario in the month of May, you could bet the farm on the salmon fishing being exceptional. This week, Jake Romanak of Fishing 411 TV teams up with Jared Higginbotham of Yakima Bait Company to field test the new salmon lure known as the spinfish. This rotating plug is hollow and can be stuffed with cut bait and procure natural scent products that help make this unique lure smell as good as it looks to the salmon. When Jake and Jared get together, things get crazy on and off the water. Dude. Maglev come through, baby. Woo! He got love that. Hooked up. Oh, I'm trying to catch up to him here. Oh, you don't like that. I'm going to bring this rod in. I am officially caught up. Oh, so cool. It is bright. Not bright. It's early. Here on Lake Ontario, we had a little bit of weather come through first thing this morning. It's springtime. I mean, it's springtime in the Great Lakes. Woo! He's not happy. Well, we got one going 35 feet down on this downrigger to start it off. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Oh, he's swimming at the boat now, Jared. One thing that we're noticing right now is this temperature is something that we really chase a lot when it comes to salmon fishing. There really isn't a big change in temperature as far as the water temperature goes right now. So we can literally catch fish on the surface but we could catch fish 100 feet down and everywhere in between. And so we have our gear really spread out, try to figure out what depth it's gonna to take to get these fish to bite. <laughs> Woo! Good morning, Mr. Salmon. Very mad Chinook. Good morning. Very, very cool. That 3.5 drinks mackerel, man, is a dirty bird when it comes to catching salmon. It is, man. It's really become like my go-to yeah. everywhere we travel. If I gotta catch a king, this one's going in the water. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like we were talking earlier, I mean, any any salmon species loves chartreuse and chrome. And you know, the, the great maglet does that. And 3.5, it's amazing to me how many salmon 3.5 actually catch. This fish is super green, Jared. Yeah. 
worries me as he just starts swimming at the boat like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rigs out there, big boy. Rigs out there. Gonna use them arms. Use them arms, baby. All right, man. See, he's so green. He is so green. He did not want to come to the boat. There we go. Let's see. Ready? Nice. <laughs> we got That's how she's done, little bro. That's how she's done. Let's bring this aboard. It's a good way to get woke That's up a great in the morning. Way. That's my good friend Shane Magnuson would say, welcome aboard, Mr. Salmon. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, I had a little sleep in my eyes to start the morning, but that'll wake you up in a heartbeat. Well, that's why I let you knock me out of the way and grab the rod, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, take a look at that king right there. That is a great way to start any morning of fishing. It's hard to beat Lake Ontario. Today, my big buddy brother Jared is here from the <laughs> West Coast. We've shot quite a few shows over the years together. It's always fun to have Jared out here. Yeah. And we're gonna catch a pile of fish today, buddy. We're gonna catch a pile of fish today, buddy. The Magnus giving us a little telltale sign that the salmon wanna come on. The SS Jake Romanek. <laughs> All right, this one's going in the box. Back out. And we got a lot more fish to catch today. Kill it and grill it, baby. Kill it and grill it. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. This week's episode was filmed out of Lake Ontario between the towns of Lewiston and Wilson, New York. The reason we come here is because it's consistently good fishing throughout the month of May. We just talked about that. We should be able to catch fish all day, Jake. And look, we're starting to catch fish. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to have a mask on. Beautiful smile, yeah. Jared. That's a high fish up there. Three color light core. You know, a couple of our fish, all of our fish have come like that 35 mark and above. What is a three color fish? In that 15 foot range. 15 foot, wow, that's really high in the water color. You know, and what I'm noticing is that because there's not a huge temperature change, these fish literally can be anywhere. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh look yeah. at that, it's got that lamprey on him. Oh, we yeah. saved him. That's a coho. He pinned his mouth shut, that's why he had no fight. <laughs> I was gonna say, it didn't look like he, this is a better fish than what I thought. I thought we had just a little jack on Yeah, right? I know. He pinned that, uh, I've seen that happen when they, they just pin their mouth, and if you got full control over their head, they, they can't go anywhere. They can't turn, they can't head shake, they can't fight. They just like, mouth closed, can't breathe, come in, bonk, go in the cooler. There you go. Oh. That's your spinner bite. See, they don't hook up sometimes, they chase it. So they're, I'm fishing that three and a half spinner, which is something we fish back home. And, and a lot of times, it's going behind a flasher and it's dancing like this, right? And so those fish come up and they try to catch and sometimes they just miss it. Even with the treble hook and a stinger, they just miss it. And that just happens, so. The good thing is it's just a spinner, there's no bait. We just leave it there and let it do its thing. I got off one fish and I looked over and my spinner rod is just torched. And this is a Chinook, more than likely. Yeah. This is what I was talking about earlier, those little three and a half spinners. And uh, I just looked over and the rod was just buried to the bottom. I'll move some rods around here for you, Jared, and create a hole so we can land this thing. So one thing about salmon fishing is this is like a Chinese fire drill. You gotta move all these rods around. Just create a spot at the back of the boat to try to land one of these fish. Yeah, this is a unique presentation for here. I bet I'm the first one to ever catch a salmon on a uh, uh, three and a half spinner in the Great Lakes. <laughs> here we go. You ready, Jake? Yeah, I'm gonna have to jump back here, buddy. There we go. That's cool. So you can see here, I caught this on a three and a half spinner. We fish these a lot back home, and it's just simple. It's just a monofilament leader, a three and a half blade, a clevis, a few beads, and a piece of tubing. And this goes behind a rotating flasher. And we fish these at home, and uh, it's just a great method for catching all sorts of salmon. And uh, this coho obviously thought the same thing we did. And so here we go. Oh, Jared. There we go. Hooked up, buddy. Lead rod bite, buddy. Lead rod bite. Got one on the West Coast rod. The West Coast rod. We don't use a diver, these are leads. Same thing, same property, man. It's just, um, I think they're easier to maneuver and get in and out and around gear. 
It's been effective. We've had, yeah. what, three or four bites on the lead rods today. No, it's been good. And so that, it's basically we're doing this in place of like the old school dipsy diver, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it's the same concept. The nice thing about the lead weight is it's easy to set and we can control it. If we start marking fish kind of like a downrigger, it's easy to drop it down or raise it up if we need to, to keep it in where those fish are. Nice coho, Jared. Yeah, that's a dandy one there. A lot better. Nice. Bite. Another one of the spin fish. Man, it came out just when I netted it, too. That's a nice call. That's a beautiful call. Nothing wrong with fish like that. Yeah, no, those are gorgeous. Um, you know, the spin fish thing on the lead rods, it's just a lot of fun. You're really going to see the takedown. You know, the, the rods will just bury, and you're going to watch that rod hammer and pick it up and it's direct connect to fish, you know. And so, uh, it's just a fun way to fish, something new we're trying out here. We're going to pull this fish out and let you look at him. Oh, that's actually a really good call right there. For this time of year, I mean, it's the month of May. It's early. That fish is going to do nothing but grow all summer long. And they are just absolute footballs. It's just straight muscle. Yeah, it's a great little coho, you know. And it's a fun bite, you know what I mean? And they're a fun fight. Coho or wily, they turn. They twist, they jump. So, now look at that green color on his back. Isn't that yeah, pretty? They're pretty. They're yeah. pretty. Just absolute muscle. Thick, thick in the shoulders. Good eating fish, too. So, yeah. we're going to get this one in the box and get reset. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, one of the reasons that Offshore Tackle is such a popular inline planer board is its versatility. This board can be used for a variety of species and it can be rigged all kinds of different ways to accommodate those different types of trolling presentations. And uh, I'm just going to show you three of the most common ones. This is the way the board comes from the factory. It comes with the orange OR19 on the front and it comes with a, the red OR16 on the back. If you fish monofilament, maybe a copolymer line, or if you like fluorocarbon as your main line, this is the setup that you're probably gonna find the most success with. And this is what we personally use a lot on Fishing 401. But a lot of people don't necessarily just fish those lines. A lot of guys are using super lines. So if you're that guy that likes to use a super line, a fuse line, what I would recommend doing is substituting the orange release that comes on the front, the OR19, for this release. This is called the OR18 Snapper, and it's designed to handle super lines, slippery, low stretch super lines. And what I would recommend is putting the snapper on the front, and then of course just staying with the, the, the 16, the OR16 on the back. And this setup is going to be very successful for guys that want to fish braid. All right, but there's another option here. Let's say, for example, you're a braid fisherman. Uh, but you also want to release your boards when you hook a fish. Well, there's another option you can consider. Check out this release on the front here. This release on the front is called the SAMS Pro Release. The beauty of this release is you can wrap your braid on it, it's a plunger release, and then close it. Then you go to the back of the board and you're going to see the snapper release that I put in the back here. You're going to put the braid in there and close it so it can't come out. So what will happen when you get a fish on and you pop the rod tip, the release will pop open the line uncoils there, but the board is still going to be hung on the line by the OR18 snapper release on the back. So if you like to release your boards and you want to fish braid, this is the setup you're looking at. If you want to fish braid, but you want to keep the board fixed permanently on the line, this is the setup you're looking at. And if you want to fish monofilament and release your lines, this is the setup you're looking at. So three different ways you can rig an offshore board. They're all deadly effective and you can use it with whatever line that you prefer to use. So today we're, we're trying uh, one of our new lures, which is a spin fish, which has a bait cavity inside. I'm pulling it apart just like this and open it up and I load it with this bait. Now what have I done with my bait? So this is chicken of the sea tuna and oil. And so I take the tuna and oil and I just put it in a Tupperware container like this and then I mix it with some Procure bloody tuna and a little bit of sea salt, non-iodized. Mix it up and I let it sit overnight. And then the sea salt helps firm up the bait a little bit and keep it in the, in the, in the spin fish a little bit longer. But it also reaches out that scent. So the whole time this bait is trolling through the water, it's leaving a scent trail. So you're also catering to one of the salmon's main um, senses, which is its sense of smell. And so that's why the tuna fish and the bloody tuna oil is definitely the kicker that's getting these fish to go today. Well, you know you're a West Coast guy when a drag starts going off on a board and you're like, hey, what was that? And Jake's like, it's a fish on a board. <laughs> so I picked up the board. Sounds like we finally got hooked up on a king, though. 
kind of broke our streak. We were all a little bit of a lala land there for a minute. And that fish is on a, on a five color on, on the outside board. We're running a, a four leg course setups right now. It's just getting those lures out and away from the boat, putting them on a planer board and sending them out to the side. And it's always a really good way to target silverfish salmon and suspended water, especially during the day. As the sun comes up, um, it's a great time. It's a great way to get things away from the boat. So a lot of times what you'll see when you come out here is the stuff that's close to the boat, like downriggers and divers, or in this case, the lead weights that we're fishing, fire first thing in the morning morning but as the sun comes up and it gets to be in the middle of the day you know it's your lead lines those lead core lines that really seem to catch a lot of your midday fish it's always crazy to me too because like we were on all the rods but there's no way to even do that here like when you hook a fish if you're reeling all the rods it'd take you longer than when to land a fish exactly yeah, pretty exactly. wild somehow when that fish jumped there jared he kind of got hooked a little funny and probably almost came off when he jumped and yeah. then that hook caught him a little bit funny but we got him in the box yeah hey it's a chinook yeah, bright little fish. Yeah, that's not a bad king right there. Yeah. No, that would be a good eating size fish too. And uh, <laughs> it's crazy because, I mean, this isn't a big king at all. No. I mean, you know, maybe a two-year-old king. When that board went back and that drag just started screaming. Oh. It doesn't matter the size. They still yeah. are like freight train. Yeah, your heart still thumps, man. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of uh, salmon fishing is, you know, that could have been a three, four-pound fish or a 15, 20, 25-pound fish. Right. You know, that's salmon. They, what are, you can't dictate what's going to bite. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Okay, so I'm going to reset this thing again after our last fish. It's pretty simple. And, uh, you know, I got my, my ball and you can see everything hanging right there. And so I just simply set it down and the desired depth is 65 feet. And so I just let it down. We're going fast enough that I can just slowly feed a line like this and let it out. And my gear trails back. As long as I can still feel that flasher thumping a little bit through my thumb, it's not tangled up. And so I'm going to put this thing back in the water. We literally put it, put it in the water, land the fish, and I've got it back in the water within, you know, 35 to 40 seconds after we drop the fish. And I'll be fishing again. The neat thing about this style of fishing is, um, you know, I fish seven rods back home, and so if I'm targeting fish at different depths as we're going through certain areas, just like here, it's like if I see a fish on the finder right now that's 20 feet below my targeted depth for my ball, all I have to do is right here. I don't have to mess with a downrigger or nothing. Boom, I just dropped it in 20 additional feet, and I'm fishing now for that fish, right? It's a quick reaction thing, so, you know, it's just a really neat way to fish, and it's very, very, very simple, and the lead ball is very easy to use, so. You know, if we look at the evolution of salmon fishing in the Great Lakes, it basically started out in the 60s where we fished spoons and we caught as many salmon as we wanted. Over the years, salmon fishing has gotten, honestly, it's gotten more difficult and we've had to refine our presentations as anglers over the year to be able to stay consistent and keep catching fish. And if you look at how we've created these evolutions, it's all come from the West Coast. We basically learned these presentations from the guys that are fishing on the West Coast and adapted them here to the Great Lakes. Now, one of the focuses on this week's show was actually to get Jared out here from the west coast and play with a new lure called the spin fish which is a lure that's basically taking over the fishing out on the west coast a lot of people are using them and I believe that it's going to become the wave of the future it's going to be something that here in the Great Lakes we incorporate so when Jared came out we actually fished a lot of his methods that he would do back at home and for that we were trying to figure out speeds leader lengths and the type of things it's going to take to make these lures fish here in the Great Lakes once we got all those details figured out we were able to incorporate this technique into the way that we Great Lakes fishermen would fish by fishing planer boards, by fishing our, our downriggers. And then instead of fishing dipsy divers, we decided to fish these lead weights. And this combination has worked very well and we've been able to put a pile of fish in the boat. The coolest thing that we get to do for a job is get to play with all these new things and figure out what it takes to be the next best thing. We have caught a pile of fish on, on this West Coast style today and it's really cool because it just shows that even though the fisheries are a long ways away from one another, you can still use West Coast style tactics here in the Great Lakes. And the truth of the matter is, Jared and I talk about it all the time. Oh yeah. These are your fish. And yeah, these are our fish. These, these came from our fish. hatcheries, you know, years and years ago. And um, you know, salmon are gen genetically programmed the same, right? And so the fact that I catch these fish out in the coast, um, West Coast on these tactics, just I had to prove my point that we could catch them here. You know, the coolest part is us being able to figure out and how to adapt these techniques for the next cool thing that fishermen are going to do out here. And you know, it could be for the next 20, 30 years, they're going to use a similar tactic to what we're doing here. You're just going to migrate it from West Coast style to the East Coast style of fishing. Exactly. And that's fun, right? Like, that's fun. Whoa. There you go. You got him, buddy. Hi. Another good king right there. That's awesome, buddy. 
You don't Arms love are starting to get sore, I can tell you that. Yeah. We caught a pile of fish today. We have caught a pile of fish, <laughs> dude. A pile of fish. Well, that's a better fish for sure. Oh, yeah. That's a better fish. Um, now we gotta keep that constant tension, you know. There we go. Well, I'll reel down this lead ball. When I do, I'll lift him straight up and you can net him. Sounds good, man. Oh, that is a nice king, Jed. That's a nice king. You ready? I'm gonna lift his head straight out of the water. There we go. We got him, buddy. That's a good fish. That's a dandy there, brother. That's a good fish right there, Jerry. Yeah, buddy. There ain't nothing wrong with a king like that. No. And on the spin fish. That on is so cool. On the spin fish. You know, come out for a week and you just hope the weather's nice. And then he goes, by the way, I have a new bait that we need to fish. You talk about put some pressure on our shoulders. I hope this bait catches fish. Boy, we've caught a pile of fish we've on this bait. We've caught a pile of fish on, dude. It's been great. Yeah, we've been getting bites after bite after bite. It's a fun, it's a new method, you know, and it's obviously effective. And, uh, you know, that's the coolest part about my job is, this is testing the lures, right? right? Like It's not like I had someone else test it, I bought it from them and then here. No, I, I take it out, we test it, we prove it, we fish it, then we bring it to the world to show them this stuff. It, that, you can't ask for any more than that. That's, That's great, great, brother. Cool. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek and you've been watching Fishing 4 on 1. We'll see you here same time, same place, next week. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 4 on 1 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. It's gonna do nothing but grow all summer long, and they are just absolute footballs. It's just straight muscle. Yeah, <laughs> straight muscle. They're so strong. Yeah, they're so strong. You know, you a little five-pound fish like that. <laughs> Here's my point, right? Here we go right out of your hands. <laughs> Full grown man got it gripped by the gills and still wiggles away.